Elders and Youth Conference Day 2 It's me again, Devlin Anderstrom, uh, and I am here with um, Valerie Davidson. All right, Valerie, what is your involvement with Elders and Youth? So I have been coming to Elders and Youth for over 30 years. I went to the first Elders and Youth Conference, I think it was in 1984. And I think there were only 52 of us at the time, 52 registered youth. And to see what it has grown into today is pretty incredible. Um, to see the evolution at the time um, in that first year, there was a lot of um, talking to us. <laughs> we didn't necessarily participate, I think, as much as we see today. And um, it's really exciting to see so many hundreds of, maybe even thousands of young people um, meeting with elders at the time. At the first one, it was um, elders had one meeting and youth had another meeting, and we never really came together. So it's nice to see that it's done in a more traditional way where we're together. Um, and then now I am um, on the board of trustees of First Alaskans Institute. Yeah, that's pretty amazing to, to think about how much it's grown and how much it's progressed over the years. Uh, so why is it important to you as a trustee? Well, I think um, leadership development is important for everyone. Um, I think that, I mean, just seeing what happened in my life was really one of my first opportunities to meet with other Alaska Native young people from around the state, different parts of the state. And yesterday when I was talking to some um, young people, just having a quick conversation, I said, you know, I have friends today who I met for the first time at Elders and Youth over 30 years ago, and you will have that experience here as well. Um, a couple of years ago, my daughter, one of my bunnicks, um, came to Elders and Youth, and it was in Anchorage at the time. And when she came on the first day, she was real quiet, really shy, kind of digarik a little bit. And um, by the end of the first day, she, I saw her just completely come into her own. I mean, it was like watching her um, blossom and really gain a lot of confidence. And by the end of the second day, or even middle of the second day, I think she was the official hugger <laughs> of elders and youth. Yeah, it's pretty amazing to see what this uh, conference does for the youth in developing their, their confidence and their leadership ability. So um, what kind of work is being done about child well-being in general? <laughs> So over um, the last year, uh, First Alaskans Institute worked with uh, the Office of Children's Services and others in the Department of Health and Social Services, as well as Casey Family Programs, um, to really talk about, um, uh, really do a series of Alaska Native conversations that matter. And uh, for anybody who hasn't experienced those before, it's really where we bring groups of people together to talk about things that are really hard to talk about, but they're the most com they're the most important conversations that we are not having as a community because they're painful or they're difficult or they're just really hard topics. And so um, we asked uh, First Alaskans to convene a group of um, people uh, to talk about child welfare and child well-being um, because we recognize that um, how Alaska Native children, our, our children, are not, um, are not doing well in our child welfare system. And um, we have a pretty significant disproportionality problem in our state. Um, when this administration came in, 22% uh, of the children in our state are Alaska Native, um, but 62% of children in out-of-home placements were Alaska Native or American Indian. And that's a huge disproportionality problem. Yeah. Um, we have been able to make some progress, so we have, we're trending in the right direction. That number is now 55%, but still, that's an unacceptable number. And so we um, brought together people who really have been historically suing each other. Um, the 
OCS, Department of Law, uh, Alaska Legal Services, Native American Rights Fund, tribes, guardians ad litem, people who were really at opposite sides of um, ICWA cases. And we said um, we wanted to have a real conversation and we wanted to be honest about what was happening to our children. And um, I, would, I always say that um, we wanted to hear the truth. No matter how hard it was to hear, we wanted to hear it. And things got very real very fast. And hard things were said and hard things were heard. But as a result of that series of five meetings, we now have a strategic plan. The state now has a strategic plan on um, how to improve outcomes for Alaska Native children who encounter the child welfare system. So we have um, six different strategic priorities. Um, one is we, um, a strategic priority is we have respectful government to government relations, uh, relationships where we recognize that tribes are governments. Um, and just as we respect other sovereigns like states and the federal government, we will do that with tribes. And we will actually say the word tribes out loud and recognize their sovereignty. Um, the second is um, we want to look at um, compacting, uh, such as has been happened in tribal health, such as occurring in tribal health, where uh, with regard to child welfare matters, uh, we think that tribes are well positioned to be able to take over ownership and control over their child welfare matters and child well-being. Um, the third is we want, we recognize that um, Alaska Native culture is um, w t the way that it is traditionally practiced uh, builds resiliency in children, builds strength, and also when traumatic things happen to us is also our best path to healing and our best opportunity for healing. Um, right now, a lot of the um, child and family restoration programs are really a Western viewpoint and there really hasn't been a lot of recognition or availability of tr tradition and culture as a way to be able to heal children and families. So that's a third. Um, the fourth is we embrace the spirit of ICWA, not just the letter of the law, but um, really doing right the right thing for children and families. Um, the fifth is uh, community engagement, so that it's not my problem because I'm the commissioner of the Department of Health and Social Services or that I work for the state now. It's your problem too. It's everyone's problem. Um, and it's everyone's opportunity to fix it. So we all have an interest in making sure that our children are safe. And that's just as much your job as it is my job. Um, and then the last one, the sixth strategic priority is um, doing a better job of um, state um, interrelationship working so that we can build down some, break down some of those silos or look at the barriers to success and making all of those things happen. Um, recently, the Deputy Secretary for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services was in Alaska and the Tanana Chiefs Conference um, folks were sharing the strategic plan with her and she said, well, any tribe would be proud to have the strategic plan. It's a good one. And what they said was, well, the reason we're so proud of the strategic plan is this is not a, a tribe strategic plan. This is the state's strategic plan. And we have come a long way. Um, are we where we need to be? No. But well, at least now we're pointed in the right direction. And we're um, rebuilding our relationships with tribes um, and with tribal members. Um, to get us where we need to be. And a part of that, um, quite frankly, is admitting where we are now and admitting what's not working now because we can't responsibly um, develop a, a path for improvement unless we know where we really are and we're honest about where we are now and what isn't working. So and First Alaskans really did an amazing job of facilitating those conversations. And that is awesome. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, really hard work being done here, and um, I'm excited to see what comes of this in the future. So thank you. Keep up the good work. Oh, yeah.